Mic check one two. We on. We on. Hey everybody, and uh, welcome to the thirty sixth episode of Tripping with Theo Bold. I'm your host, Andre Theo Bold. I go by AT. I go by Dre Theo. I go by Driggity. I go by the Old Soul Bold. I go by simply Dre. And I probably have more nicknames yet to come. But welcome to the show. So for all my new listeners that don't know, um, the show is called Tripping with Theo Bold because I be tripping in speech and in thought. Now, right now, my voice don't sound like this, right? Like, um, I kind of got a little something going on in my throat. Um, it's not the vid, you know, um, and I know it's not the vid because I had the vid and this is just a head cold, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think, I think I either got it from, um, when I got baptized on Saturday night, you know, I was outside and had to go get dipped in that water. You know, I've been, I've been pondering that for a long time and I went ahead and I got dipped in that water. Um, and I had to change in this tent. So I'm not sure if it's from that or, um, I went to the gym the other day and I was working out. And um, had my mask on and everything. And, um, well, it's not the vid, and then the mask wouldn't matter, right? But I was working out, and um, I was sweating. I came outside. I made sure I covered my head up. But right when I came outside is when I started to kind of get the scratchiness in my throat. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, so as you guys see in the bottom, I got this timer going. You know, I started doing the timer a little while ago. And um, this is the YouTube timer. You know, this is the YouTube two-minute countdown. You know, so I heard that if you cuss within the first two minutes of your video, YouTube will knock your video down to the bottom and people won't watch your video. So that's why, you know, um, once we count down to zero, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk free. I'm going to talk freer than I'm talking now. You know, scratchy voice and all. But, um, yeah, for for those that don't know, this show is called Tripping with Theo Bowl because I be tripping. Uh, I be tripping in speech and I be tripping in thought. Um. I think I may have said this, but in case I didn't, I'm just gonna make sure I, I'm gonna make sure that I uh, go back and make sure you guys know why I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this show is called Tripping with Theo Bold because uh, I don't want to do that. Why did I do that? Come on, Dre. There we go. Yeah, this show is called Tripping with Theo Bold because I be tripping in speech and in thought. And as y'all see that. Two minute timers down, so I'm gonna start talking this shit like the way I want to talk this shit. What you gonna do about it, YouTube? You ain't gonna do, you ain't gonna do nothing about it, YouTube. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop talking shit because they may they may mess around, and put me on a shadow ban or some shit. You know what I'm saying? But um, the show's called Tripping with Theo Bold because I be tripping, like I said, in speech and in thought. I literally trip in speech, figuratively. I trip in thought. Um, I grew up with a speech impediment. It's not all the way gone, so whenever um, I, like, stutter or have, like, a hiccup, um, instead of editing out the stutter or the mess up, I just say, come on, Dre, and I get on with life. You know what I'm saying? I sound like I sound like OJ right now. I don't know why. I sound like I got to get rid of this. I've been drinking my tea. I've been drinking my water, vitamin C, all that. My turmeric, I got all that. Um, And also, it's all... Um, it's called tripping with Theo Bold because I be, you know, tripping and uh, thought figuratively, you know. Um, so, like, I have a lot of crazy ideas. I think a certain way and I'm not afraid to ask certain questions. So, hence the name tripping with Theo Bold. So, right now, we are at the, eh, we're at the Lawyer Malloy episode of tripping with Theo Bold, right? The Lawyer Malloy, right? So, Right now, we're at episode 36. 36 episode. And the reason why I go, man, is because Lawyer Malloy is not really a... He's not really a Buffalo Bill, man. <clears throat> he's not really a Bill, you know. Uh, Lawyer Malloy is really more of a... Um, he's a patriot, you know. We got him in a package deal with... Um, yeah, we got him in a in a package deal with, uh, with Drew Bledsoe, you know. And the first game we had both of those two players, you know, Lloyd Malloy played safety. Bledsoe was a quarterback. We thought, man, we're going to start beating the Patriots for sure, you know. Like, this was like the pre-Brady era. Or this was like right when Brady started getting good, actually, you know. And we thought, man, we're going to get Bledsoe and Malloy, and we're just going to go end the whole Brady joint. And nah, man, they knew what they had. 
they had some hot garbage and they gave it to us knowing that they could beat them. So that's why I'm not too excited about the number episode, you know, lawyer Malloy, you know, great player, great safety, like no, no shade, but he's, he's, he's a Patriot before he's a bill in my, in my eyes, you know, um, what else? Um, but yeah, uh, also another player that wore 36, a lot of people don't notice was, um, Dante Whitner. I'm saying Dante Whitner was a safety for the bills. We got him from Ohio state and, um, <clears throat> Dante Whitner was that hard hitting safety, you know what I'm saying? Um, he he came out wearing I think his first jersey number was 36, but we cut I think we cut um this is when we either cut or traded Travis Henry, and Travis Henry wore number 20, so then Dante Whitner took over wearing the number 20, and that's why I didn't put Dante Whitner up there. But man, um, <clears throat> sound like OJ right now, man. You know, just saying, you know. Um, <laughs> Um, anywho, um, this is the 36th episode of Tripping with Theo Bold, or this is the um, Lawyer Malloy edition of Tripping with Theo Bold. Um, what else we got going on here? Oh, yeah, before I go any further, um, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend, you know? Because right now, right now, see, I'm struggling with my voice, man. Y'all going to have to work with me on this one. I'm doing this for y'all, you know what I'm saying? So I hope you appreciate the work I'm putting in, you know, for this. So I can entertain y'all and educate y'all, you know what I mean? Um, but right now, I am at, I'm at 52 subs, man. Shout out, shout out to my new listeners, man. Shout out to y'all, man. You know, shout out to you guys, man. You know, um, as they say, if you build it, they will come. And you guys are coming, you know what I'm saying? So thank you. Um, but yeah, right now, um, I'm at 52 subs right now, right? Um, so I need y'all to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend. Because right now, I'm at John Holacek, John Holacek slash Preston Brown number of subs. I'm at 52 subs. And if you tell a friend to tell a friend, I could be at Marcus Patton number of subs. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I want to get to Marcus Patton, man. Marcus Patton was like a low key. He was he was like my gridiron, one of my favorite gridiron Buffalo Bills, man. Linebacker, man. Like look look at like look at the picture, man. You know what I'm saying? You got the neck brace, shoulder pads, man. Like look, this is one dude you do not want to do the Oklahoma drill with, right? You don't want to go head up with him, man. He will he will clean your clock. But Marcus Patton, man, and it's so fitting because. Marcus Patton went to USC, you know what I'm saying? And I'm living in LA, so I really want to get to number 53. Marcus Patton was one of my um, unsung hero. One of, he's one of my favorite unsung Buffalo Bill heroes, man. You know what I'm saying? So if you tell a if, come on, Dre. If you tell a friend to tell a friend, I can get the Marcus Patton number of subs. All right, so now that I said that, um, let's go ahead and get on with the show. Let me do some promo stuff. Um... Let me do some promo right quick. So as y'all see right now, I got a fisherman beanie on. I like how it fit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm gonna pair like I'm in church and shit. You know, man, I gotta get to make sure I don't sweat too much. Now, nah, but I got this fisherman beanie on. Um, I went online and found this uh, fisherman beanie. Um, and um, I got it from this. Uh, if you just Google fisherman beanie. And do the uh, shop, um, Jolly Holla. I think is how it's. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but I ordered it. It took a minute to get here, man, because this joint came from China. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm pretty sure the people on the docks that were working the shipping had this hat on, man. But um, that was corny. Whatever. Um, but um, I ordered it, and it took like um, it took like two weeks to get here, if not a little longer. You know, I paid like nine bucks for it. And I like this fisherman hat so much, man. I got four more, so hopefully, um, I get them before June. You know, because you can't wear a fisherman beanie in June. Like this is like a fall, autumn type wear. You know, springish. You know, so if not, I'll have them for next year. You know what I mean? But I like this look. You know, I like the fisherman beanie. You know, um, what else we got going on, man? Um, 
Um, I was gonna plug. Uh, oh yeah. Also, um, if you guys uh, want to see some good funny comedy videos, man, uh, make sure you guys go on um, uh, YouTube or any form of social media. Just put in Chocolate Sundays comedy, man, and man, they bring you like the best comedians from around the world, man. Like, I mean, um, if you go to the YouTube, man, they got all the little clips from the shows, man. And, um, if you go to the social media page, you'll see all like the virtual stuff that goes on and man, they really doing their thing, man. So make sure y'all, you know, check them out. Um, <clears throat> also, um, I want to support shout out to my man, uh, DJ as is. Um, if you go to As Is Life, I think it's As Is Dash Life. I think I plugged him before on my YouTube. He's a, a DJ out here in LA, man, one of the best. He plays my old school fucking groove, man. He be playing my hits. He be playing. He be playing. He's right up my alley, man. But he has a lot of um dope apparel, dope gear, and this shirt is a shirt that uh it's kind of like an inside joke, right? But um during during the pandemic, he was doing the uh, virtual. Um, OG Sundays, right? OG Sundays is a thing out here in LA. Um, and um, he did the virtual. And um, he had to sign up whenever he had to go take a break. And um, I made fun of it in the chat. I said it's, I said it's a Charlie Brown sign. Like, remember in, uh, in Charlie Brown Christmas special when um, when it was, uh, who would think it was Lucy who was doing the, the Dr. Real is in. And Charlie Brown was trying to get some advice from um, Lucy. Well, and they had the sign that was backwards, so I kind of made fun of it. And he went ahead and made a shirt, so I had to cop it. You know what I mean? So, um, I mean, shout out to my boy uh, DJ as is. Make sure you guys go, make sure you guys go check him out. Um, and big news for my 52 followers. Big news. All right. Pretty soon. I'm not sure when, but pretty soon. We taking this show live. I'm gonna go live. You know, I don't care if one of y'all pop in the room. I don't care if, I mean. I would love all of y'all to pop in the room, you know what I'm saying? But um, I'm going to go live, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I was debating on whether I should go live or not, you know, because all the big YouTube followers have, like, hundreds of thousands of subs and, you know, and people, like, make fun of people that get in lives with no one in there, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I figured, you know what? I was debating on it. I was like, man, let me get my following up. Once I get to a certain number of following, then I'm gonna go live. But as I spoke with a, um, <clears throat> as I spoke with a, um, a consultant, quote unquote, uh, he was like, "Yo, man," he was like, "Yo, just," he said, "Just do it, man. Fuck it, you know, go live, you know, go live, man. Just do it, man." He said, "He said do it because when you start going live, it's a different energy, you know what I'm saying, and um, you don't want to have to wait till you get the followers to then, you know." be green at going live you know because going live is a skill right or it's not really it's, i would say it's a skill slash you know comfort level you know it's like a comfort level right where you just want to get comfortable doing it you know and when you go live there are no there are no like retakes you know what i mean so i'm gonna start going live i'm gonna uh, mess with a couple streaming like services and i'm gonna blast my stuff out to the universe man to all platforms um i'm gonna rip the audio off do the whole, you know, um, do the whole, uh, you know, podcast thing and just build this thing from the ground up. You know what I mean? Just, if you look at my first videos from where I started, man, I started from a little bullshit conference room microphone. Now look at me. Now look at this, man. We doing it. You know what I'm saying? Almost, but we can always do better, right? So, anywho, just wanted to uh, let y'all know what's coming up next. Um, so, let's go ahead and talk about um, some sports right quick, man. <clears throat> Pardon, like I said, my voice. I'm doing the best I can. Hope y'all, you know, just you know, bear with this. Hopefully, this will be gone in a week. But like I said before, I know it's not the vid. I know it's not the vid, man, because I never, I didn't have one ounce of chills. Like that's that's the that's the key, you know. When I, I remember when I had the vid the first time. I remember I had a head cold, and I woke up with like a lot of phlegm in my throat, and I spit out a whole lot of phlegm. But then I felt fine the next day. And then, like, periodically, like, for, like, a second or two, I, I had the chills, you know. Don't have the chills at all right now. So, I'm pretty confident it's not the vid, you know what I'm saying. It's probably just, a, um, like I said, 
I got baptized Saturday night. I was outside in the cold and, you know, I probably got a head cold that finally caught up with me or it's from me working out at the gym. You know, I'm trying to shed a couple pounds, man. You know, I'm trying to get back to the old Dre. I'm trying to get back to the 155 pound Dre. Right now, I'm like 187. You know what I'm saying? I weigh myself. I'm 187, which is like a little lighter for me. I remember when I got up to 200 when I was in Orange County. I got a, my I got chunky when I was up to 200. And I said, no, 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 no. I can't do that. But one thing I did when I like shared weight was I would just get up early in the morning and hit the treadmill, you know what I'm saying, um, for about 20 minutes every day. Um, but uh, it's weird because, like, now at work, I have, like, meetings that are early in the morning. And then once my day gets started, it's hard for me to kind of get out of meetings and it's hard for me to, you know, kind of juggle my schedule. So I'm doing the best I can, you know what I mean? But we're going to get there. We're going to get back to the 155-pound Dre. All right. And maybe, maybe, you know, as I as I shed weight, I might trim my beard down lower because you guys only see me with the, you know. OK, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop bullshitting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, So so in the NFL, if you guys been following, man, a lot of crazy trades, man. Um, Yeah, Matt, Matt Ryan is now a cult. And, I'm, and I think it's about time for him to move on, man, because he's been with the Falcons and he was supposed to be the Michael Vick replacement. And his first year out, he was killing it, you know, and he had Julio. And, but the problem was the Falcons never built that defense up, you know. So when you don't build a defense up like that and you just focus on offense, you're only going to get but so far. Like, you got to be a well-rounded team. You got to be able to stop the run or stop the offense, you know, of the other team. And um, I remember uh, the Falcons even traded. They over they messed up in the draft because they over-traded um, to get Julio. I think they made the trade with the Skins and they got Julio because they wanted to beat the Packers, right? That was who they had to get over with the Packers, you know? So they, that's why I'm saying with the Bills, I don't like when they say, oh, we're trying to build up our team to beat the Chiefs because the Chiefs might not be the team to beat next year, you know? Like they might be the fifth team to beat, you know? And other teams may be above them, you know? So what are you going to do, right? You just got to be as well-rounded as possible, man, and make improvements when necessary. So, that was the first move, right? Was uh Matt Ryan and um then Deshaun Watson going to the Browns, man, that's huge. Like that that makes them like a an instant playoff contender, like easily. Like I'm not even talking wild card, man, because they got a run game. Shit, they got Lamar. They got um Hunt. They got I said Lamar Hunt. They got um they got Hunt. Um they got uh Chubb. They got um, Jarvis Landry, you know, and they got another, like, big receiver, too. All they got to do, and they got two tight ends, all they got to do is make a trade and get a bigger receiver, man. Like, if they get a Julio Jones, man, it's, nigga, it's a wrap, you know? Um, so I'm worried about them Browns, man, because that's a, that's a huge move. Because Deshaun Watson, trust me, if anyone, I'm, a, I'm, I'm keeping it a buck right now. If there's one player that Tom Brady doesn't want to see, that's Deshaun Watson because because Deshaun Watson went toe to toe with him um, against the Patriots or when he played for the Texans, and he just kept coming back at Brady, man. So Deshaun Watson, that that's a huge move. What other move do we got, man? Um, shit, uh, Tyreek Hill, man, he's on the Dolphins now. I don't like that shit, you know. Um, like the Chiefs are gonna be a whole new team now. Like they're gonna be. A pass heavy team like all that trick offense not gonna work because with Tariq Hill he was more of just a he was like a um he was a what's I don't know what you call it he was a um well he was an x-factor like he like he reminds me of a, well he's a more souped up version of Dante Hall who used to play for the Chiefs back in the day but he was like I really wouldn't even say he played receiver man he played like just get the ball in his hands anyway. Like, he would line up and run sweeps as a running back. He would line up in the slot. He could go deep. I mean, he could just beat you so many ways, man. So the Chiefs now are going to be more deliberate, right? Or they're going to be more – um, they're not going to be as trickery, you know? Like, I think they're going to be a pass-heavy offense because the running backs they have just aren't healthy enough. And then 
if they can't run the ball, they're going to have to throw the ball. So I think Travis Kelsey's stock went up a whole lot. Um, and then Juju got to stay. They got Juju Smith-Schuster, right? So that was a big move. And I think they're going to rely on, or they have a player spotted in the draft that they can get. So I think that was a move for them to kind of trim the cap and to get better at receiver, you know? And then you still got um, Miko. What was it? Um, you got Nicole Hardman. So they got all the fast people still there. But the Dolphins now, you got to worry about them. You know, now they got Jalen Waddle, you know, and they got Tyreek Hill, man. So that's going to be, that's going to give defensive teams like a lot of headaches, you know, trying to cover those two motherfuckers, man. Them dudes fast, you know. But they like Smurfs, though, you know what I'm saying? So if you, if you like, keep them over the top, you know what I'm saying, um, and just put pressure on um, – Tua, I think I think you could probably get to him. Oh man. But yeah, man, a lot, a lot of crazy trades in the NFL, man. Oh yeah, and of course, you know, the Bills got Vaughn Miller, you know. I think that's I think that's a I think that move is more bark than his bite, you know. Because Vaughn Miller, I don't think is in his prime anymore, you know. Um and he already got two rings, right? He got a ring with the Broncos, and he got a ring with the Rams. So it's like he got the money or whatever. Now, if he's addicted to winning, that's cool. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, we paid a lot, but um, his guaranteed money is not like – it's like less than half of his contract. So I'm cool with that. It's a big-name splash. Um, Like I said, we'll see. Now, if he didn't have a ring, I'll be like, oh, okay, now it's different because he he trying to get that ring, you know? And um I'm not sure. I think he I think he has a Super Bowl MVP too, right? When um he played with uh, Peyton Manning, because Peyton Manning did, because Manning didn't win that Super Bowl. So I think Vaughn Miller got that MVP. I don't know. I'm I'm really questioning the trade, like I said. I mean, or not the trade, but the sign. Like I said, we'll see. The proof is in the pudding. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, March Madness. You know, it's been a, it's been a weird year for me, man. Like I'm just not in the March Madness like I normally am. Like none of my schools are in there, right? Like Temple's not in it. Um, uh, Morgan State's not in it. Maryland's not in it. Iowa was in it, you know. So I think you and I might still be in it, you know. Um, but haven't really watched it, man. And in the past, I used to always kind of like stay up and try to work out the combo neutronics, all the combinations of coming up with a bracket that would last. And I would spend hours just coming up with different brackets and all them joints would bust like in the first round. So I'm like, nah, I need to save my time. I need to spend better ways to save my time, you know. Um, and the prizes were like either a car or a couple hundred thousand. I'm like, nah, I need some milli. I need, I need at least two mil if I do that shit right. At least two mil. So that's why I was like, nah, I'm not messing with that. So I went ahead and I um did the uh, MGM MGM app, right? I um, I had the MGM app and I created a parlay of like 14, 15 teams in the first round to see if I couldn't get lucky, you know. So that's all I've been doing. I've been just basically putting money into like parlays, and it was crazy, man. I remember um it was exciting too because I would go through and just pick some teams, like like 14, 15 teams. And I had them all in a parlay, and I put five dollars on it. If that shit hit, man, we talking one hundred and fifty thousand just off of that, you know. But um, I don't think I, I think I may have gotten like the first game to go off right, but then after that, like I never made it out of the second. I didn't make it past noon um, Pacific Standard Time when it came to the games, right? So tomorrow, like there's less games. I think I have like eight teams to pick from because we're in the Sweet Sixteen. Um, so if I pick eight, the payout's not that great, you know, so I may have to put a little bit more bread in there, but we'll see. Like I said, we'll, like I said, we'll figure it out. So in DraftKings news, let's talk about some DraftKings right quick. Um, in DraftKings news, um, your boy is kind of on to something, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm winning $8 every other day consistently, you know, I've been consistent every other day. I'm consistent, you know, I have a method. Like I said, I may, I may or may not um, be paying attention to the days that 
certain players go off. Like, like are they a Monday player? Are they a, are they a Wednesday? I may, I may or may not be doing that, right? But um, every other day, I've been winning eight dollars consistently, you know. Um, and um, yeah, I'm trying to get this 10k, man. You know what I'm saying? If I get, I'm always like one or two players off, man. You know, if I get one or if I get the right players on or off, man. Like I said, I got a couple days before playoffs start or a couple weeks. Boom, shit, playoffs around the corner. Damn, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure this out so I can get it. I can get 10k a day. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get 10k a day to keep the nine to five away. Like I said, I'm trying to I'm trying to tap out of this nine to five bullshit. I ain't trying to be doing it, man. But um, but yeah, but as of tonight, Christian Wood is is fucking me up right now, man. Christian Wood is really messing me up, man. I had had more faith in him, man, and I'm disappointed. You know, um. Highly disappointed, man. Um, like, typically what I do is I make sure the players I pick, like, so I have to pick six players, right? And I try to make sure all six players are on different teams because if you pick two players from the same team, the likelihood of them just playing two-on-two -two versus everybody else um, is very slim, right? So if you pick, like, for, like for example, if you pick... Um, like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I know not to pick those two together, you know, because one or the other are going to go off, you know, like Marcus Smart plays better with um, um, Jalen Brown, you know, and tonight I made that mistake, right? I picked, um, I picked Jason Tatum instead of Jalen Brown and they both scored the same amount of points, but Jalen Brown is further down the list, you know, so he was the better pick. Um, but then Kyrie and Durant just played two on two. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't see that coming. But I still have hope with Embiid. Embiid got 22 points, eight boards, two assists, and he's like mid third quarter, so he can definitely um, catch Durant. Right now, Durant has 68, 68 ish, you know, fantasy points. Embiid has 47. But Kevin Durant's game is over, so um, yeah. So I'm thinking he can catch him. Um, then Jante Murray is at 43. He has to catch Kyrie at 63. He's at 23 points, six boards, and seven assists. So he might mess around and get a triple double, you know? So that would be good. But um, I've only finished eight points behind um, Brown. But the pick that I'm most proud of tonight is my buddy Heel pick, right? Because I saw that. Um, who was it? Um, Brogdon was out. And um, so was um, Halliburton, right? So, Heald had to show up, you know what I'm saying? So, I picked Heald, and he beat out the guy right now who's winning $10,000 in my pool. Um, and I'm closing in, and I'm closing in on the green, you know? Or I'm closing in on the blacks. So I'm probably going to win, like, $8. But, man, I'm trying to get that 10 k man. But also, we got baseball starting up, so I'm, I'm going to be on that. Like I said, the future is looking bright. Um, anywho, right now we're like almost almost thirty minutes in. So let me go ahead and um, uh, I want to get back to uh, I don't want to do that. I want to go ahead and get back to um, I want to go ahead and <clears throat> get back into my S one tales, right? So as you guys know, I had a coworker at a previous company. I'm I'm calling him code name S one because. You know, um, I don't want to give his name out. You know, I don't want to. I'm not about trying to like um, throw shade on anybody, but I got to talk about my experience. And, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me. S1 was a motherfucker, you know. So as y'all remember last week, last episode, I talked about how he was on that cornball shit about caring about what goes on in our personal lives and making sure that we were in, in a good mental state, you know, for the pan, like in the pandemic and. We had these little meetings and these little powwows and talk all this shit about, oh, he cares and he cares and man, 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 all this shit. Then I got laid off and ain't heard from the motherfucker since. It's been, it's been two years. So I'm like, man, fuck him, you know? Um, Sorry for sounding negative, but, you know, really fuck him. Like, I, that's why I don't like working this corporate shit because you got all these motherfuckers in your face acting like they care, but they don't, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I just want to come in, do my job. Give me my check. Let me go the fuck home. Leave me alone. You know what I mean? I'm trying to build some shit outside of work that can make money so 
I don't need to go to work. Like if I go to work, it's because I want to go to work, not because I have to go to work. You know what I mean? And then also I talked about in the previous episode, I talked about how he first came in and how he was. So in this episode or this tale of S1, um, I want to talk about uh, he made it a point to try to find out what I did in my free time. You know, like it borderline harassment. You know what I'm saying? Um, so basically what happened was when he first started working there, when he first started working with our team, he, um, oh man, he, uh, I remember, so I was, I was taking an acting class, right? And I worked out a deal with my manager where if I came in at 6am, I was allowed to leave at like 2.20 or 2.30 so I could beat traffic to leave Lake Forest to make it up to Los Angeles, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, if you leave LA, cause the acting class started at five o'clock PM, you know? So if you left Orange County, like at a certain time, it can take two and a half, three hours to get up there, you know? So, um, two and a half is like what I needed to get up there. So I took this acting class. I signed up for it, you know, and it cost bread. Like it was like two days a week or three days a week. I think it was two or three days a week. It was two days a week. And then we had like homework and stuff we had to do on the weekends with other students and stuff, you know. Um, but anyways, um, I was in I was in Toastmasters at my job, and I was like known for the one that would like you know crack jokes and stuff, right? Like I I, I actually tried to use I tried to use my um, I tried to use my Toastmasters time as um, as like an open mic, right? So I can do corporate comedy, right? Do the safe shit, right? So I would get up there and we had like table topics and they always picked me to do table topics because I could, you know, talk off the cuff and like, you know, make everyone laugh. You know, it was like kind of like a, like a, it was like a joking session almost, you know? And I think that, that, that ate his ass up. The fact that I was in there, I was quiet around him or in my team, but at, but in Toastmasters, I could, I could light their room up, you know what I mean? So, um, I remember, so I'm telling you this to set something else up, right? So I remember, um, I worked out a deal with my manager to, as long as I got in at 6 a.m., I could leave at 2.20, 2.30. And, um, and I made sure I let him know, right? I, I told him like, you know, not to, or in my calendar at work, I always had it blocked off. So if you tried to set a meeting on a certain day after, you know, 30 it's, it's gonna show that i'm blocked right so he wouldn't even check my calendar he would just like make a meeting right and i would tell him i said look i can't make it this day because i have a thing worked out with my team with my manager um i came i've been in at six so um can you make it the next day he's like oh sure no problem no problem no problem and he kind of it, it kind of went in one ear not the other so um one day i think i slipped up and um I slipped up one day and I was like, yo, I have a, I was like, yo, I can't make this meeting. It's, it's been blocked out. I said, I have to make this class in LA. Oh, what class do you have in LA? I'm like, man, don't worry about it, man. It's just a class. Are you studying to be an actor? Hmm? Are you going to be a comedian or an actor? What are you, what are you going to do? I'm like, dude, don't worry about it, man. It's none of your business. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say it like that. I just said, man, don't worry about it, right? So I remember um he like he sat across from me in this one building we were in. And um he's he he made the same mistake where he booked me for a meeting at like after 2 30 on on like a Thursday or whatever it was. And um I saw it and I said, and I just I declined it. But he was on the phone with another person that was supposed to be at the meeting. And this motherfucker shouted out my business. He was like, oh, yeah, Andre's not going to be able to make that meeting. I think he has a, I think he's like acting class in L.A. or something like that. I was like, this son of a bitch. I'm like, you motherfucker. Right? Just like once he got information, he felt like he owned it and just blasted. Right? So I would just downplay it or whatever. I just let, I just, I would just, I just ignored him at that point. You know what I'm saying? So then, um, like I remember, like after Toastmasters, right? This is where the part comes in. After Toastmasters, he would come up to me and be like, "Hey, man, 
I'm going to find out what you do after work on Thursdays and Tuesdays. It's the last thing I do. And you're, and you're going to tell me. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It just, and it just became a point where it was like it was like harassment. I'm like, dude, man, back up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah, man, just all in my shit, you know? Right? And because I didn't tell him what it was, he basically assumed what it he he basically assumed what it was and then he blasted out my information like it was his. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I didn't want to tell him shit. You know what I'm saying? So that was that. But this is where the shit got real, real testing, right? Like this shit got ugly, right? So we had a we had a work trip, right? Where we had to uh, go it was like it was like business travel. We had to uh fly out to uh Seattle. Um and it was a waste of money, man. It was it was a waste of a work trip, man. That that shit was terrible. Like, I was trying to I was trying to tell them that there was no need for us to go on travel for this meeting, right? I was trying to tell them that there was no need for it, right? So basically, S one, he liked to print shit. Like every time, like I could, I swear, like he spent probably like two thirds of his day walking by the printer, and you would just hear paper. You would just hear paper just rustle, just it's like he was a paper bird just flying by my cube, you know. And um <clears throat> we flew all the way to Seattle to basically print out well, he printed out all the screens for this product that we're working on. And it was like maybe I was about a hundred pages, you know. And he would spend like a half hour or close to an hour like you know putting tape and taping up these pictures to talk through the screens and the, and, the, and the screenshots and we did it one time on on site but then they felt like you know it was a we had to go up there to it was a good idea for us to go up there and do it in person so we're so we're, so we flew all the way up there to post pictures on the wall to talk about some shit that we thought we needed just to have people be like, nah, we don't want that. You know? So I was like, man, whatever. It's their money. They can spend it. They do what they want. But that could have been done, like, via, via like, a a uh, presentation. Like, or, like, a WebEx or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? We didn't need to do all that. But anyways, um, we had to go book our travel. We had to, to go through our company to book our travel. And um, he was like... Uh, very like boy scoutish you know what i'm saying like he wanted to be the leader you know he's like hey man i got the car okay so you're gonna ride with me like i'm like all right bitch whatever I'm like you know what i'm saying cool so um we got in there flew out there and then um we uh went to the rental car spot got the car and it was like a 45 minute drive from the airport to where we were gonna go check in at our hotel and in the car man he just started off with that shit He's like, hang on, so what is it that you do? Like, I'm going to find out. Like, we have all this time in the car. We're going to drive, and you're going to tell me what it is that you do. I'm like, dude, you need to really back up, man. Like, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You're going to tell me. And I'm just like, look, bro, I don't mean you no harm. I remember, like, I just got cold. Like, I got really, like, cold because I, I felt like if you took a step further, man, this car was going to be in a ditch somewhere, man, because I was going to. Nah, this shit wasn't going to end well. You know what I'm saying? Because like I told you before, he like to snatch shit and likes to like get little temper tantrums and shit. So he do that shit in the car. I'm gonna smack the shit out of him. Like you know what I'm saying? So I'm so he driving and shit. I told him I said, look man, I said look man, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? I said look, I said uh, right now, I said what you're doing right now is a uh, borderline harassment, right? Did you do your training? Because it's in the training. Right, that 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 training that you told us to go, that training that you harassed me to take about harassment, it's in there. So, um, if I were you, I would stop right here, you know. And he kind of got like a smirk on his face, and then after that, he just kind of shut up and it was a quiet ride down there. You know what I'm saying? But very uncomfortable working with this dude, man. Just not not professional. Um, I mean, he appeared professional, but under the hood, it was some bullshit, you know. So, what can we learn from this, right? We gotta, we gotta have a positive spin on shit, right? So, what can we learn from this, right? So, what, 
what can be deduced from this situation is anytime your company has corporate training, take that shit, right? The training is is not just there for you to get a checkbox so the company can cover their ass. It's for it's for you to use it as a shield against annoying ass coworkers, you know what I'm saying? So that's why you want to do your training, man. So if people, because a lot of times, I don't want to be fucked with. When I go to work, I just want to work, go home, get my check. I want to be left alone. I don't I don't really want to do all that personal shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might I might fake like it so I can get the job. You know what I'm saying? But if, if it's not in the job description, I ain't got to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's important to read your job description. If it was in my job description where it said, where it said I had to hold hands and act like I'm somebody's friend and tell them my outside of work business, I would have been like, man, y'all can keep that shit. You know what I'm saying? But nah, whenever you go to a company, man, get the corporate training because that training can be your shield and you can use it to keep motherfuckers off of you. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the positive lesson to learn from this situation. Um so enough of that enough of that. You know what I'm saying? I think uh next episode I'm gonna talk about um I'm going to talk about his failed leadership example. Right? Yeah, that's going to be the next one, I think. But anywho, moving on. Now we're going to move on to the main topic of the show. And we're already 41 minutes in, man. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. I'm going to try to, you know, expedite things a little bit. But I got shit to say, so I'm going to say it. All right. Um, so what's behind me, right? Um, If you guys remember the movie Tron, um, there's a thing called a solar sailor, right? And um, this behind me, this is the solar sailor hangar, I guess. And this is the solar sailor, right? And the theme of the show basically is kind of loosely related to this. And basically, um, <clears throat> it's about dreaming and dreams. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, um, why would I? So I picked this because when I think of dreams, I think of a solar sailor as being symbolic to the dream, right? It's something that you get on to get to your destination in your in your dream, right? So that's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Um but the title of this show is Fuck Dreaming and Do. I'm gonna say that again. Fuck dreaming and do. You know? Like that's that was like my biggest problem in my whole life, man. Man, I was a dreamer, man. Like, I was a dreamer. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I dreamed, you know what I'm saying? And I know that sounds like, it sounds negative, but there comes a point to when you got to do shit, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, think about it. Does anybody really know what the fuck they want? Right? A lot of people say, oh, yeah, I know what I want. I know what I want. I know what I want. You don't know what the fuck you want. You know what other people wanted. Or you know what other people had, and you wanted what other people had because it looked nice to you, right? Everything was inspired. In my opinion is everything is inspired from something else. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but a lot of people don't really take the time to be in the present to figure out if this is what they love doing. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, I think some of y'all know my history or whatever. Like when I was growing up, I was a big athlete. I tried to be an athlete, you know. I was a high school jock. Um, I played uh, I played football, little league. In high school, I played um, basketball, track, cross country. Um, <clears throat> in college, I tried to walk onto the football team and I ran track. I did a little bit of crewing, you know. But um, it's weird, man. Like when I started like really having dreams and visions of what I wanted to do. Um, I feel like I dreamed a little too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I remember when I, when I wanted to make it to the NBA, you know, like that was a big dream of mine, man. Like, um, at night when I would go to bed, like I would have like OCD when it came to dreaming, right? Like I would stay up dreaming, you know, like I couldn't go to sleep because I was so excited about what the future held, you know? Um, like I remember, um. Like I, like I said, I, I had OCD when it came to dreaming about what I wanted to do. Like, for example, with basketball, at nighttime, I would dream about what 
exact high school I would go to, like what uniform I would wear, what number I would have, like what shoes I would wear. I dreamed about um, certain situations that would happen, how I would always be the hero and always like prevail in those situations. <clears throat> I, dream I dreamt about hitting the game winning shot, you know, and in my mind, it was like, man, if I didn't get it just right, I had to go back and redream it, you know? So when I got up in the morning and had to actually go do this shit, I never really focused on just loving doing it. You know what I'm saying? It was always, I want the dream so bad that I don't give a shit about how it feels doing it now in the present. You know what I mean? So, um, and when I lived like, when I lived like that, um, people can take advantage of your mind and like deter you from what it is you think you want to do. You know, like for example, um, when uh, I was in high school, like I said, I, I mean, I've come on, I was, I was dedicated, man. I, I used to just, I would run suicides in the rain and the snow and the sleep. I would do the pistol peak, homework, basketball, teaching tape drills outside after doing my homework, fingers would be numb. Like my hands would go from numb to hot to normal to where I could get used to playing in the cold, you know? Um, and when I did drills, if you saw me do drills, you would think, oh man, this dude is a beast. But in the game, it's like I couldn't put it together in the game, you know, like my I was um in practice I could do left and right on my own, but when I got in the game I couldn't go to my left. And the ball would always like either bounce off my leg and once people kinda saw that I was like too afraid to go to my left, the coach would see it and they would put someone on my shoulder, on my right shoulder, you know. So if they put you on their right shoulder and you can't drip if if they put if they put a defender on your right shoulder if that ball goes in the right hand, it's going to get stolen, you know. So you got to go to your left, you know. So I would start games, but when I started, I would have like a fuck up and then, you know, whatever, right. And that's when I had the whole shit where like I went to the, um, there was a chapel. There was a chapel where our preacher came, where like a preacher came in and like a well-known, like a well-known preacher could sing really well. And I was like, man, I need... I need to get some advice from him, you know what I'm saying? So I asked him, I said, look, man, can you pray for my left hand? You know, I'm trying to get my left hand so I can go left. And he was like, yo, is that what God wants? And he just walked off, like, you know what I'm saying? So that, that fucked with my head to where I'm like, man, well, shit, maybe God don't want me doing this, right? So if I was focused on just enjoying playing the game instead of fucking dreaming, who knows, I might have been... I might have got a basketball a basketball scholarship to a D2 school or something and not in all this fucking student loan debt, which is not bad. I mean, I'm almost done paying it off, but still, I would have been able to. So that's the hustle, man, with student loans. I looked at what I paid in student loans for the past, fuck, like 10 years, man. And that's the house, you know? That, that's, I fucking gave away a house, man. You know, when you look at student loans, how much you paid, it's like, nigga, that's a house. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So, I got to find a way to flip some more bread, man, to kind of, you know, have house money again, you know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But, um, but now, nah, but the question is, like, you know, whatever you're doing, is that what you really want to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not, we all know that you want to do it, but, um, the, the question is, like, do people really know what it is they want? I mean, we all know what we're doing. I think the real question or the better question is, how happy are you doing whatever you're doing right now? You know? Like, that's why with this comedy shit, it's going to sound messed up, but um, I don't think I really have, I mean, it's weird. Like, I don't daydream about comedy. Like, I'm doing this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't dream about being on the big stage or... um having a Netflix special, I mean, that shit gonna happen, you know what I'm saying, like, I don't dream about how it's gonna happen, I don't dream about what I'm gonna talk about, or whatever, it's like, I'm doing this shit now, and I'm, and I love doing this shit, so I'm gonna keep doing this shit, you know what I mean, um, so, like, that's what I learned, right, so I think, me using my past failures, and all my previous things that I've tried, or attempted in life, kind of set me up to
to be in the mindset in the mindset that I'm in now, you know. So, um, my thing is, I I'd rather just speak things into existence. Like I know what I can do now. I know what I'm doing right now. But I'm not dreaming about where I'm gonna be five years from now. Like I'm already there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna happen. You know. And also too, when you dream, I think what happens is you limit yourself to what other possibilities might come up. You know, like if you sit around and dream, you might be so locked in on something that there might be an opportunity right under your feet and you don't realize it, right? Like for example, I had this uh, classmate of mine in, in high school and he wanted to play basketball. Like he was like, I'm playing basketball, you know, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to go to UNC Chapel Hill, like who doesn't, you know? But he was, like, really, like, focused on basketball. But he was naturally fast, you know. And he didn't want to, like, we had to beg this dude to come run track, you know, because he was naturally fast. But it's like, if he took that energy and put that into track, yo, I mean, he could he could, he could have probably ran. He could have probably got down to about 10-5, 10-4, you know. And that's scholarship. That I mean, that would have paid for school, you know what I'm saying? But who knows, like. End of the day, it's like when you like are so locked in on something, you might you might miss something that's under your under your um right under your nose, you know. And even like it might not be like that. It might not be that like discreet, right? It might be something where in your field you're doing something, but you see it one way. But if you keep an open mind, you might be able to. Like for example, my sister, right? Um. Man, I'm proud of my sister, man. She she's uh man, she's killing it right now, man. Um so she went to school for fashion design. Um and um while she was in school, or well, this is what she told me. She said, like, you know, while she was in school, she just didn't really see opportunities or how she was gonna make money at doing fashion design, right? So she got into like shoemaking. And then she kept it open mind, did the shoemaking thing, but then um she went overseas to start a company because it was cheaper to it was cheaper for her to make make the shoes in this part of the world than it was in the US. So she got her own company, man. Shoe line. Matter of fact, I should be plugging her right now, man. Um, if you go on Instagram, I'll make sure I plug it next time. But it's called I think it's called Shoe Shoe Shoes. I, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. So hey sis, if you're watching this, please forgive me for messing up your company name. But it's I think it's X X O U. Let me just look at it right now. <clears throat> so you guys know where to go. Um, I think it's Zushu. So it's spelled Z-O-U-X-O-U. -O but man, she's killing the game right now. You know what I'm saying? Because she kept an open mind, you know? So it's not about settling. It's about just, you know, weighing your options and, fi and figuring out, like, what's what's best for you as you move forward. You know what I mean? Um... So, but I'm going to keep it a buck right now, man. Like, the younger me would be very disappointed in me right now, man. Like, cause I had high hopes for me, man. You know? Like, if a younger me, if I could look down a window and look at the younger me looking at me right now, he'd be like, nigga. <laughs> like, I thought you were going to be in the NFL, nigga. Like, nigga, where... I thought you were going to be in the NBA. Shoe deal, house. But but the current me right now, I'm like, um, I'm happy with me, but I got a lot of work to do still. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So just some food for thought, man. Like, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, um, who put that thought in your head? Like, who... Like, what inspired you? I'm just curious. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and put it down in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? I'm interested. I want to know, like, who inspired you to do what? You know? Um, or if there's any people out there that organically came across something, right? There's some people that just, and I, I think that's maybe like 1% of the population, right? If you just organically started doing something, man, that's dope. You just reached out and did something and you didn't even look to see who was doing it. You just said, man, I like doing this shit. I'm going to keep doing it, you know? That's a blessing, you know? Um, 
But anywho, uh, what else we got going on, man? Let me go ahead and get to the comedy bump portion of the show where we talk about my hiccups in the comedy world and the comedy game, you know. Um, before we go any further, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend so I can get the Marcus Patton number of subs. Marcus Patton number of subs. Um, yeah, I pause for a minute because um, his name is spelled with a V. It's Marv Cus Patton. Like it's M A R V C U S Patton. So the V is silent, but I remember one game. Um, I think one announcer called him Marv Kiss, and I was like, man, he must be. anyway, that, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Um, let me go ahead and get on to the comedy bump portion of the show. Um, so basically, I want to talk about the comedy or the funny illusion, right? Like, once you're in comedy, man, the thing I've learned is, is um, you have to kind of be aware of of who's funny around you, you know, because in your mind, you might think that you're funnier than somebody else. Um, when really it's like, they might be way funnier than you, or they might be just right where you're at, you know? So that's why like, I'm very like, like the attitude I have is everybody's funnier than me, you know? Because once you start getting in that little ego realm where, oh, oh I'm funnier than that person. And I'm funnier than this person. I'm funnier than them. It's going to come a time when, they get an opportunity or when you both are trying to, you know, compete for an opportunity and it may slip out that, Hey man, I'm funnier than him. And they might be like, no, 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 you're not. You know what I'm saying? And then now, so my thing is, I just say, man, everybody funnier than me. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I say outwardly, but inwardly I'm like, you know, I'm the best, you know? Um, but, uh, um, so one example I have for this is, um, is yeah, I did this uh, comedy show, man. I did this show in Iowa, and there was a comic that was a headliner, and he was, um, I looked like me. I did my homework. I did my research, you know. Um, and my boy Sharp was the feature. I was the spotlight, or I was doing a guest spot, and um, this headliner was the headliner, right? Guy from Chicago, you know. And um, I remember I looked up his video online. He did a um, <clears throat> he did a, he actually taped for Def Jam, you know. Um, and when I saw his tape, I was like, "Oh, I'm funnier than him," you know. But I didn't like, like I didn't think he wasn't funny. I just thought I was funnier than him, you know. But at the time, I didn't realize that when, in uh, Def Jam they tape multiple tapes, right? And a lot of people's tape don't make it. You know what I'm saying? So. It's hard to tape for Def Jam, but it's even harder to, to get your tape to even air on Def Jam, you know? So, his never aired. I remember thinking to myself, man, at the time, I had like one and a half jokes. I had my little Transformer joke, and that's all I had, you know? Like, if I could kill him with that Transformer joke in the first joke, I would just start kind of talking like ad lib, and all that shit was trash, right? But I remember I did the show. I opened up. I went in there thinking, man, I'm going to kill this shit, you know, and... After the show, he's going to want to come and work with me to get some jokes. And we're going to team up and link up. And I'm going to get some more work. And maybe I'll get a feature spot in the future. I got to that show. I did my little Transformer joke. And I just got nothing. That's all I had. I'm like, shit. So I tried doing my other shit. Bomb that whole set, you know. So Sharp went up and he did his thing. Killed it. Sharp is a real funny dude, man. And then um, the headliner went up, and he didn't do none of the jokes that he did in that Def Jam taping, man. And that motherfucker was hilarious. Like, he was doing, like, like storytelling, art pieces. He was just doing, it was just all different types of jokes, man. And I remember, man, I learned my lesson, you know what I'm saying? Um, humble yourself, you know what I'm saying? So whenever I go to a show and whoever's on there, I'm like, anyone on the show can kill, you know. All these motherfuckers can be funnier than me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't go in there with no attitude that I'm the funniest, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know when I get on stage, I'm going to be funny, but I don't really, like, measure myself against other people. I don't really, right? Because, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, what are you measuring against, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather take that energy and put it into me than just being the best I can be within myself, you know what I mean? So... 
Um, that's the comedy bump lesson of the day. Uh, make sure you, uh, like I said, um, yeah, just be real, be real careful of that, you know, all you, all you comics out there, you know, you guys know. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up with this right quick. Um, what I got? Oh yeah, uh, man, shout out. <laughs> shit, I came in, man, I, that wasn't a stutter, that was like my throat just said scratchy and shit. But yeah, man, um, but man, shout out to T.I., man. Shout out to T.I., man. He is putting in that work. Shout out to him, man. Um, like I said, I'm here in L.A., you know, bouncing around different comedy clubs, and I'm seeing him at all the clubs working, you know, doing his thing, man, you know. Um, but let me give some constructive criticism, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then, um, so me, I like, I, like to, I like to kind of break down, then build up, you know what I'm saying? I like to end on a positive, you know. But... If he ever came to me and was like, hey, man, what do you think about my set, my work? I'd be like, man, go watch my video. You'll see, you know, watch this video. You're about to hear it, you know. But anyways, the uh, negatives of, uh, of when I watch T.I., these are things like things that need improvement or things that, you know, are. I'm just being constructive because I want to make sure I don't do those things. Right. But um, one, I feel like he's doing too much time for his skill level, you know. Like, I feel like he hasn't really figured out how to do it. Like, he's funny. He's, like, charismatic. But I really feel like he hasn't really, like, learned how to, like, punch something up to where it's, like, tight. You know what I'm saying? And you do that with a short amount of time. Like, five minutes is, like, all you need. And if you can't get and figure out the punches within five minutes, then why do you need to do 12? You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not saying that because I want more stake time. I'm saying that because... That's an art to like know how to like punch up stuff in like a little bit of time to where you kind of can get people back because when you have long lulls and you need to have punches and you don't deliver those punches, the audience is gonna lose confidence in your ability, right? So that was one thing I saw. Um, also, too, they had him in a in a brutal part of the lineup, man. They threw him up after my boy Henry Coleman, man. And, Henry Coleman's pen is not to be fucked with. Like I, Henry Coleman is like one of one of the most underrated comedians in my opinion. Like I mean, a brilliant comedian, man. Just knows how to make everything funny, man. Real tight. Um, he's always setting stuff up. Boom, boom, boom. Like you know. Um, but what else? I feel like Ti. I feel like his punchlines are like a little too. I feel like his punchlines are telegraphed. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like you kind of know where he's going before the joke starts. You know and you want that element of surprise with comedy, you know what I'm saying? So, but I think he'll figure it out, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think I think he'll figure that out, you know. Um, <clears throat> this one thing is um kind of hard. It's not really a negative. It's more of just it's gonna be interesting to see how he gets over this hurdle, you know. Um, but making his persona translate in stand up that's gonna be hard because. Um, he's a philosophical person. Like he's very intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Um, very smart, right? And in comedy, if you appear that you're smarter than the audience, then you better be able to swoop down and bird feed them with jokes and then pull them back up. Right? It's it's weird. It's like I feel like. I don't know, like, me personally, like, I don't, like, Dave Chappelle is, is brilliant. Like, he's smart. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, like, Dave Chappelle is, like, a philosophical comedian, in my opinion. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't really do, like, self-deprecating material. Um, He just, like, is a philosopher. Like, he looks at things and thinks about things, you know? Um, But to me, it's like, if you're, if you're trying to go that route, like, you kind of have to... um kind of be on that Chappelle level and Chappelle's been doing comedy for a long time like he just didn't he's gifted talented but he's been doing it for a long time too so um I'm not saying it's not going to work I'm just saying it's going to be difficult to get that persona of being a philosopher and being like highly intelligent to then translating that into comedy you know not saying it's impossible but it's going to be it's going to be hard you know me personally I take I take the opposite approach you know where I like to play dumb, you know, I like to, 
I use one of the 48 laws of power, right? I, I like to appear dumber than my mark, right? When the, where the mark is the audience, you know? So I like to, it's not even a character. It's just more of a, it's more of a variant of who I am, you know? It's like, I just play dumb, you know? And I want to sound unintelligent, but the joke is crafted and it's smart. It's a smart joke, you know, or a stupid joke. And I want people to be like, man, I laughed at that. That motherfucker said this. Damn, that's profound. How the fuck did he say that shit? Like, that's what I go after at least, you know. Um, but you always gotta be you always gotta be you, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, that's kind of who I am, you know, and, and like I said, making the philosopher um persona, you know, translate to comedy, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a challenge. But I think you can do it, you know, why not? You know? Um, and then the last thing, you know, my man Boogie B. Called it out, man. Shout out to my boy Boogie B. Boogie B is the one that gave me my name, Driggity. You know, Boogie B is hilarious, man. Um, but um, yeah, man. You know, we want to hear about them guns, nigga. Like in comedy, you got to talk about the pink elephant in the room. If you a celeb and you want to step in the comedy world, we know what's going on in your world or what's being advertised about you, right? So. If you can't talk about it for legal reasons, then make that a joke. You know what I'm saying? Talk about why you can't talk about it. You know, that would be funny because now people are going to be like, oh, I got to hear this shit, you know? And if you even got to, get with your lawyer to make sure. Because I understand, man. You don't want to, like, say certain shit because then you fuck up your lawyer's re representation of you in court. And then they might lose the case. And you don't want that. You know what I'm saying? But um, um, but you got you to gotta, you gotta take a pro chat. You got to take a stab at it, man. Because... We're talking like you're like when you're talking about fame and everything else from a loose, high philosophical level, we like, yeah, okay, uh huh, okay. Yeah, and they what yeah, they, yeah they, how about them guns? Right? That's what's on our mind at least, you know. Now the audience now the now the general audience, they like they're just happy to see like they're like impressed that T.I. is even there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, or tip, my bad. Like they're like they're impressed that he's in there, you know. But as a comic, I'm looking for like, yo, say some shit I haven't heard before, man. You know. So those are the negatives, right? But the positives. Let me talk about the positives about Tip, man. Um, stage presence, man. His stage presence is amazing. You know. Um, like he doesn't like falter up there. He's super confident. He's not afraid of silence. Like a lot of comedians, including myself. When we hear too much silence, that's when we start racing, right? And our persona changes, you know. But T.I., he don't break character, man. So that's very impressive, you know. Um, um, like, if I'm doing long bits and and the crowd isn't, like, biting at the little jabs I'm putting out there, like, if they're not biting at that, I kind of start racing. And then I start to forget lines. And I start to do lines. And I start to th get all discombobulated. And then I end up blanking, you know. And I, and then I have to bail on the bit. And when you do that, you basically took the audience down a path and left them there, you know? So now they have no trust in you that you can get them out to where they want to be, you know? So he does that very well, man. Stage presence is, is amazing. Um, I think it's, I think it's very smart, too. Like Another positive is I think it's smart that he's using his star power um, to basically start at a level where other comedians takes them years to get to, right? Like he walked, like he's on there doing, doing ten minutes with like with like national headliners, you know. And I'm trying to wait another year just to get on first impressions, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's smart that he's doing that, right? Like that's his open mic. That's crazy. Like to me, it's like that's where I go to showcase that. But he's he's starting that like that's his open mic, you know. And it's not an open mic because. Um, so I call it his open mic because he can get up there multiple times, like whenever, you know, whereas with me, cause I've seen him get up there like shit, like twice in the past two months. And most headliners you see there, you see them maybe like, like once or twice a year with huge months of gaps in between, you know what I mean? So, um, it's smart of him to do that. Like why start at the bottom if you don't have to, like, you know what I'm saying? So his top, his ceiling is going to be bigger than a lot of people's ceiling, you know? <clears throat> um, another thing too, man, is uh, 
Um, I was at another positive about Ti man or Tip doing comedy man is he's fun to be around man. I mean I've been I've seen him I've seen him uh I think I've been around him maybe about three times in the past like couple weeks man he's fun man like he's just like one of the other comics just hanging around you know actually like he'll come through and like come dap it up with some people come chop it up a little bit you know um like a lot of comedians like you know. Like, they want to get photos with him, and he's cool. Oh, yeah, sure, come on, man, yeah, you know. Just real, like, real humble around all the comedians, you know. That's one thing I like about him, man, is he's, he shows respect around all the comedians behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? Um, So, um, and, like, a lot of other comedians I know that are, like, famous or popular, um, a lot of them, a lot of them dudes are assholes, you know. Um, like, brilliant, you know what I'm saying? They're dope at what they do, but I really wouldn't, I mean... Based upon like my interactions with them or just how I see they are, it's kind of like man, whatever. I'm not pressed to be around them like that. But if the opportunity arises and we happen to chop it up about some shit, I'm I'm not gonna like turn that down, you know. But now Ti is a fun dude to be around, man. You know, so like, I don't know him like that, but like still, every time I see him, he'll he'll give me a head nod or come through and dap me up. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, man, rock out tonight. You know what I'm saying? So. Real cool, man. So, shout out to T.I., man. Keep doing your thing, man. Hang in there, man. Um, He gonna figure this shit out. I think he gonna figure it out. Like, that's that's just my opinion. Um, But, um, oh, one other thing that I hope that he's doing. I, I hope that he's recording his sets, you know. Um, I'm hoping that he's, like, either has, like, a videographer or he has someone where he's, like, recording his stuff. Because that's where the real work comes in, you know. Like, a lot of people, when they do comedy, they they can stay in their head, and then they want to get on stage and then go do it. But you got to, like, you got to record all that shit. Like, it's like in school, right? When you get a final exam or an exam, if you fail that bitch, you got to take that home and study it, man. You got to break it down. Where did I fuck up? What went wrong? And then go do it again, you know, until you get it right, you know? So, yeah, I can fuck with my nose. And no, it's not the booger sugar. It's just my nose itching and shit. But anywho, man, I've been talking for a minute. Um, an hour and 12 minutes to be exact. Um, anywho, before I go any further, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, up next, what's coming up next for Driggity, a.k.a. me. Um, I'm doing this uh, fresh comedy jam guest spot. I still got a, um, that's coming up this weekend sometime. I got to I gotta follow up with them to see what's going on. Um, then, uh, next week I'll be in OC, um, doing a show at the Harp Inn. I used to do open mics down there, but now they actually revamped it and now it's a show down there. So had, had a promoter hit me up down there about that a few weeks ago. So I got that locked in. Um, and then I just booked another show in April, you know, um, so late April. So, um, as I get more details, I'll make sure I'll, I'll let y'all know, but in case you guys haven't. Uh, make sure you guys, uh, yeah, see that right there? Make sure you guys um, hit me up, or it's over here, one of the two. Um, yeah, AT is where it's at on all forms of social media. Follow me, you know? So that's where I put all my shows and stuff at. So, um, yeah, um, on my Instagram or social media, um, that's where I post all my information about the shows I got coming up. So, um, like I said before, uh, make sure you guys like this video. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, hit up the comment section or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Troll me if you want. I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't. I don't filter out comments. So, um, but yeah, I think I said all I need to say. I said I all need. I think I've said all I needed to say. So with that being said, uh, hopefully next week my uh, throat will be a little more clear. But uh yeah, with that being said, badeep, 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 that's all folks. I'm out of here. Peace.